Loyal subjects of His Most Gracious Majesty, King George III, I stand here today before you a vexed and troubled man. But I stand here today before you betrayed. Betrayed as you have all been betrayed. Now I entreat you to hear me and you pay close heed. On the 16th night of December last, 1773, in the port of Boston, in the King's province of Massachusetts, traitorous men, disguises, as wild Indians <laughs> did in the dead of night board ships of the East India Company, and once there they did cast overboard 356 chests of tea. Well now, to prevent further such offensive acts against private property, Parliament has, with His Majesty's blessing of necessity, closed the port of Boston to be affected the first day of June, and that good people is but six days hence. However, the crimes of these ill-named sons of liberty are of no bother to us here in Virginia. For you see, prompt punishment for those crimes has been attended. The king's justice has been served. And yet your Burgess men seem to disagree. In fact, your Burgesses have for two days past adopted a resolution for the day of fasting and prayer as expression of sympathy for these destroyers of property and wanton lawbreakers in Boston. Now, of course, some of you may cry, what harm can be known by a call for prayer? What possible affront can be given by a recommendation for the day of fasting? Well, I declare to you here this day that such a call is not benign. It is a clear expression of sympathy for fools and for traitors. It is a most base and direct affront against His Majesty the King. Fool! Oh! Your virtuous men have every awareness that days of fasting and prayer may only be decreed by His Majesty. Or here in His province by myself, His appointed executive. And yet by some authority which I am simply unable to discover, and in some very dangerous state of delusion, they have ordained themselves proclaimers. Now I hold in my hand a paper published by order of your House of Burgesses, conceived in such terms as reflects highly upon His Majesty the King and the Parliament of Great Britain which makes it necessary for me to dissolve them. <laughs> and they are dissolved accordingly. God save the king! Friends, fellow Virginians, while our governor has instructed us not to bother ourselves over the punishment of miscreants in Boston, I ask you to remember that upon hearing of the destruction of tea in Boston Harbor, Lord North, the first minister of the government of Great Britain, saw fit to pronounce before Parliament that he would not hear any further complaints from America, not Massachusetts, but America, until she lay at his feet. And Lord Hillsborough informed the king that he must clip the wings of his American turkeys in Virginia, that with their high and foolish notions of freedom and liberty, they begin to roost too high in the trees. He thinks it is time to remind his lordship that if he disturbs too much his birds, he will lose their eggs for his puddings. <laughs> My friends, our governor has spoken to us just now of the king's justice being served, but I ask you, since when is it British justice that the whole of Massachusetts is punished and all her people made to suffer because a handful of men broke the law? We now see that this attack on Boston is an attack upon us all. And if British ships of war can so easily make their way to Boston Harbor, how little time might it be before they find their way to Chesapeake Bay? Decisive action is now required that we might demonstrate our determination to defend our rights as freeborn Englishmen. Yeah. Citizens, your Burgesses, 
I beg pardon, your former Burgesses have agreed that we will not tuck tail and run, but instead will assemble tomorrow morning at Raleigh Tavern, and there we will draft a protest. We will make an association for some measure of non-importation of British goods, but more essentially, we have now agreed that we must call for a Congress of representatives from all the colonies to meet annually to protect the united interests of America. You should be kept apprised by way of the gazettes. Good day, citizens. And God save Virginia. God save Virginia. To the rally. Please.